YouTube is uh, Dequita Carva. Um, I have um, a very interesting video that I'm going to um, do with you today. Um, this is a reference to, um, we're going to talk today about the true versus the image. Okay, I'm going to share some scripture with you. I have some um, music in the background, some quiet music. We're going to talk about the state of, we're going to talk about a few things today. We're going to talk about the true versus the image. Okay, this is um, the matter of creation, where creation started with um, what it was supposed to look like and so forth. And then we're going to talk about um, some of the things that the targeted individuals are going through. So we're going to talk about the state of America. The state of America addressing um, addressing its issue with um, these targeted individuals who I think have a very divine purpose in the earth, in America. It's going to start with America. So we're going to um, address that today. Um... I want you to get your Bibles open. Turn your Bibles to. There's something really evil that is taking place right now. Very deceptive, very cunning, um, in which the serpent is up to. Um, and we're going to talk about that today. So um, if you open your Bibles, let's go to. I'm sorry. Start with. Uh, I'm in the book of Genesis. All right. And we're at Genesis chapter 1, verse 16, we're going to start with, all right? Now, um, just a few things to point out. I'm going to lead you to um, some other scriptures that basically corroborate what I'm trying to um, explain to you here. Um, but this is, what it, this is what we're looking at. So it says in Genesis, we're looking at chapter 1, verse 16. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Okay, so pay attention to that. Really meditate on that. He made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Okay, so it doesn't say anything about, when you look at that, this, these, these lights are in heaven. Where are the lights at? The lights are in heaven, right? So, all right, so these lights are in the heavens. So this is what God said. He made two great lights. You know, um, see what that means. What, that, what does that mean to you? All right, there's a light that is in heaven that rules the day. And there's a light that, is, that um, a lesser light in, during the night that rules the night. Now, let's go on to... Um, I'm going to go on to um, the next verse, chapter, still chapter 1 in Genesis, the book of Genesis. We're going to go to verse number 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image. So listen to this word. He's saying, he's speaking in plural. Let's, let us make man, let us. So he's talking to what he's already, what he's already formed. He's talking to me in my interpretation is he's talking to the great lights that he had already formed. Let us make man in our image man in our image what does man in our image mean mean in our image means something that is similar to something that's a copy of something that's a reflection of but not the truth not quite the same right according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so they're supposed to have dominion in the earth okay so it is my understanding that the greater lights are there um to oversee uh to oversee their um their power on the earth but they've been given dominion power dominion is power authority they've been given man has been given dominion in the earth okay all right so now we're going to go over to the book of Daniel. If you go over to the book of Daniel, chapter 8. This is also expressed in Revelation 12 because there was a fall that happened. Okay? So I'm going to take you to Daniel, chapter 8. Book of Daniel. And you say, well, Quita, what are you doing this teaching for? What is this all about? Because it, it's very, you need to understand where you're getting your instruction from. You need to understand who, 
who is your God. You need to understand where you're receiving your information from. You need to understand if you're receiving it from the truth or from the image. Image, in parentheses, clone. You need to understand where you're receiving your information from. Okay, so if we go to, um, if we go to the uh, book of Daniel, chapter 8. Chapter 8, and if we look at verse, we can start at... Um, I'm sorry, I should have had these already ready, but we're looking at, let's go ahead and start at, um, let's go ahead and start at verse 11. Okay. So it says, uh, we're in Daniel 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 11. He even exalted himself as high as a prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifices were taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Because of transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices. And he cast truth down to the ground. He did all this and prospered. Does this sound like the riding of the white horse? Does this sound like the rider of the white horse? Does this sound like the, the horseman? Does this sound like the um, Antichrist who was given a crown to conquer? He was set out to conquer. Okay, so this sounds like a falling, right? So because of transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices. And he cast down the, to the ground. He cast truth down to the ground. Truth was cast down to the ground. Truth was cast down to the ground. So the question remains, who's in? Okay, if truth, truth was cast down. Then that leaves me, if he, cast, if he was cast down, that means he descended down, but who was left up is the question. So um, this becomes the question in terms of the great apostasy. If you go to Thessalonians, you see that there is a great, a great apostasy. Also in the book of Daniel, Daniel is the prophetic, is a prophetic book. Daniel is where we're at right now in, this, um, in the state of this nation or in the state of the earth. Is where we're at right now in the pro prophetic book of Daniel because all of these things are taking place when today you know there's still books that are sealed up until that appointed time that is spoken about in the book of Daniel but if you go to Thessalonians Thessalonians I believe um, hold on a second go to Thessalonians Okay, go to Thessalonians, uh, let's see here, it's 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, excuse me, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, um, verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, Showing himself that he is God. Okay, so the great apostasy is coming because that means that somebody understands something. There's a great apostasy because people are coming to themselves. There's an awakening taking place and people are beginning to understand. You know, it, it comes to a point where you see where we're dealing about suffering. And we're going to talk about that um, in terms of persecution, in terms of what's happening with targeted individuals. Um, we're going to talk about that in further detail um, as I continue on with this um, video. But I really want to um, stress the point that something uh, prophetic is taking place right now. We're seeing this taking place right now. There's a great apostasy that's taking place because we're wondering where's the power at? Where's the power in the church? We're wondering why haven't things... Um, why haven't things, uh, why haven't 
uh, we seen any, you know, why haven't we seen great healings and so forth amongst the church? There's still people that are dealing with um, perverse spirits and spirits of Jezebel that is running around rampant. Um, and not only that, you know, it, it doesn't really, it takes a church, the, the church as a whole. You know, I did a few videos on this where we talked about um, the, releasing the power throughout the church. I told you that the power is already in the earth. There are angels that are in the earth that are supposed to execute the word because you are supposed to be a believer, walking in faith, and know that the power rests in you. It's in you. So you are supposed to um, basically speak the word. You are the word. The word is you. The word, you are the word. There's no one word. You are the word. You are. You consist of the church. You are the church. And you are supposed to speak like you are the church. You should already have that anointing. You should be walking in that anointing. If you're not walking into that and you know that you are one of the 144,000s, you know that you are supposed to be reaching for that that word. Okay, you're supposed. That's what you're supposed to be doing. So to say to um to continue with that thought, we now have well, these scriptures that I've showed you basically um, are showing you something in which the truth is against the image. We have a battle here right now. Okay, so the fight is really against what the image the image being man the image being a, a, a clone a copy okay um the fight is really against um the bloodlines it's against the bloodlines okay because we know that um the point i'm trying to make here is that we know that there's a holy remnant there's a holy seed that is incorruptible okay and i'm going to speak for the 144,000 right now the 144,000 is a sacred, they're sacred, they're a church, they've already been chosen, they've been chosen before the foundations of the world, they've been chosen in Christ before the foundations of the world. And let me just break down what that really means, because you have to understand what that really means. To understand what that really means is that God, when he created you, because God is the one, okay? He's the one and only, all right? So he made you, all right? When he made you as these lights, these lights that he made you as, he made you as these lights and he crafted you. And he, you know, just think about baking something, baking a cake, building a house or whatever. And he made each of us very, we're, we're different. We all have different gifts. There's different things inside of us. There's different things that we possess. We're different than, um, uh, different than our, our brethren. But we are, we all came from came from the same source. Okay, so we belong to him. We are incorruptible, meaning that they've tried to kill us. We know that they tried to kill the one hundred forty four thousand, but we are an incorruptible seed. They've tried to transmute us, or they're trying to change our DNA, and they can't change our DNA. They can't break the DNA because there's something that was built into us. It's built into the gen genetics. It's built into our fabric. It's built into our bodies that they cannot corrupt because. It's perfected. It's a perfection. It is a perfected seed, and they're having problems trying to figure out how they can damage it. The whole purpose is to defile the church, right? They want to defile it, so they send all these things against the church to try to break it down, to try to what? Defile it, to try to corrupt it, to try to change its mind. That's why we're constantly renewing our minds, because we constantly are bombarded with um, doctrines of demons, doctrines of the world, and we have to constantly go against this, and we have to constantly combat this, because if we don't, then we fall into that system. But still, here's where the glory is. You're still, you're still incorruptible. You still won't fit in. You still won't fit in. Why? Because that light is still, it's a great light. He told you in the beginning, I created two great lights. One to rule the day, one to rule the night. It's inside of you. That light is inside of you. And it's incorruptible. It's incorruptible. It can't be broken down. It cannot be broken down. So, this is the point. This is where this is where um, you have to now understand your uniqueness, okay? Because I, I don't know about you guys, but in my targeting, I'm hated by um, you know people that look like me, people that look like I don't say look like me, people that are um, women. Uh, I'm getting a, a lot of hate from women, people that are my nationality, my color. And I can't understand it. I'm, I'm looked and I say, I just don't understand why is the hate coming from the women that, um, 
you know, women that I grew up with that live in my neighborhood. And I don't, I don't understand it. And I can't understand that. Why the targeted? I'm not saying that I don't get targeted because I get targeted by everybody. But um, to be targeted by them when I'm going through all of the, the things that we as women have been oppressed to, it, it really is concerning because we've had to, we've had, oh, had to overcome so many things. We had to be strong for so many things. And to see us breaking each other down is, um, you know, that's a hard thing to deal with. Um, so I'm not really sure where all of that is coming from, but it's, it's, it's a form of hate. It's, it has something to do with hate. And I don't want to hear about the, oh, okay, because I know I talked about favor before and all that stuff, but, you know, I can't help. You, so, there's certain things you can't help. You, certain things you have nothing to do with. And I don't care what you do. Nobody can be like you, okay? A clone cannot be like the image. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. The clone cannot be like the one, okay? I don't care how you try to break down a person. You know, we see copies of Fendi bags, copies of Gucci bags. We see copies of people that all have what? They are all genetically corrupt. They are corruptible. They are corruptible because why? They try to build an imitation that does not function as the incorruptible. You can't function as the incorruptible. Because why? Because the, the one who is capable of making you incorruptible and making you corruptible did not form you. He did not form you. So if he did not place his hands on you, the hands that hold the power did not build you. The hands that hold the power in his fingertips or whatever whatever devices he used to create you, whatever word that he spoke from his mouth to build you, was not um, did not make the the uh, did not make the um, the the image or the clone. So they have they are very different. From you, I'm not saying that they should be treated differently because they still have power. They have power in in uh, in, in um, the earth. Okay, they have dominion until sin came, so they had dominion and power and authority. Okay, so what we're seeing right now is that people are trying to take the gifts of the 144,000. We're seeing that right now there is a church that is on the rise. It's the church, the synagogue of Satan, that are claiming that they're Jews. And I talked about this before in the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, I believe it was chapter, and I can go to it right now, chapter 3. Oh, I'm sorry, chapter, hold on a second. Chapter 3, verse 9. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet to know that I have loved you. So we have a problem right now. So we have people that are claiming to be the truth when they're the copies. We have people that are saying that they are filled with um, the Spirit of God when they are not. Okay, it's like um, a scripture says, or I don't have um, in front of me, true they... Um, they uh, something they, but they don't carry my spirit. There are certain pe people that claim to be Jews, and they're not Jews. And you can just hear it in the way they speak. You can see it in the way they present themselves. They're not living by the spirit of God. They're not living by the spirit of God. Okay, um, and they're being deceived, and they're forming these. They're they're getting into these these uh, groups with people, and um, it's a it's a group of hate. I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's hate. It's hate. Um, and I'm not going to try to justify the, um, and some of that hate is, um, and, and people are seeing that, you know, when you look at, when you look at the Bible, remember now, God said he is going to, re Israel is going to be, look different. Okay. You know, yeah, Israel was, a, is a chosen, is the, um, is a chosen generation. However, Remember, God said those branches, he's going to burn out some of those branches. and He's going to engraft. He's going to engraft people into becoming Israel, the nation. Because Israel is going to look different than it had looked before. Okay? So, you know, some people um, need to start humbling themselves and getting back into knowing what the truth is versus um, following what the lie is. Because that's the whole thing. Um, the Holy Spirit is not in everybody. 
people believe that the Holy Spirit is in them. But you have to realize, remember Yeshua said in the book of uh, Matthew, or hold on, I think it was uh, John, the book of John, where he said they went into temples and stole doves, stole doves. Jesus cleansing the temple. Um, John, the book of John, chapter 2. John chapter 2, he said in verse 15, when he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with sheep and oxen and poured out the changers of money, changers of money, and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, doves is what? The Holy Spirit. Those who sold what? The Spirit of God. Who was the Spirit of God? Who's the Spirit of God? Spirit of God, the Spirit of God on the earth is in, in, in bondage right now. Are not are we not in bondage? The 140? Are we not being attacked? Are, have we not been sold? Okay, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a, a house of merchandise. Okay? This is what he said. This is the things, this is what he said. So there is a there's a force that's coming against us that is stealing, that is stealing, that is stealing our anointing, that is stealing our, our blessing. Okay? This is what it is. This is what they're doing. Okay? This is what they've done. They've corrupted uh, the church. They've basically sold uh, sold the, um, the uh, Holy Spirit. Okay? So, the Spirit of God is in bondage. Okay? And the wicked are prevailing as a result of it. It's like you're, in, you're being um, locked in. But, I come to let you know that um, in Ecclesi, I can't never say this word. <laughs> Ecclesiastes. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it right. Like. Go to the book of Ecclesiastes because everybody knows that when I talk about it. I like to use the scripture. But if you go to. Um, Ecclesiastes, everything has a time in verse 3. Everything has a time. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what has been planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down. A time to build up. A time to weep. A time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones. A time to gather stones. A time to embrace. A time to from, re re from refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Because here's the thing. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not receiving any peace. I've looked for peace. I've tried everything. I've tried to find peace. I'm trying to find peace. Um, and instead, I'm constantly getting war. There's like a war that constantly is right above my head. I can feel the war. I'm in the war. It, it brings me in. It drags me in. Forces me to constantly be in. And that's not the state that we're supposed to be in. I try to find my peace. I try to meditate. And um, and this is what we're supposed to do. Um, and when you say a time to hate, yeah, I hate the system that we're in. I hate the system. I hate that we have to be subjected to such a cruel system um, where we have to be casted out and... Um, basically ostracized because of uh, a light that we have and when people try to come against that light or come against that knowledge that um, some of us possess some of us possess more than others because I'm going to be honest with you um, some of us has wake have waken up more than others have okay some people are more awake than others are I, it's like I'm slowly I'm back and you know I'm back and forth however I know that I will awaken. When I awaken, I will know everything that I need to know. And um, it's just like some of you. Some of you will awaken and know everything you need to know because, again, it's all time-related. But I really want you to understand something. I really want you to understand the the deets, the level of detail, the, the, um, the beauty of the things that are in you. You are righteous by, by His Word. He called you righteous, and your path is only going to be righteous. That means if he called you righteous, he knew you before he formed you in the womb. 
you are righteous because he knew that your path would always be consistently righteous. You can't do any wrong because he classified you as righteous. So you're going to always walk that way. No matter where you're going, no matter where they try to pull you, you're going to do the right thing. Why? Because it's in you. It's in you. You can't help it. You don't mean to. You don't. Sometimes you want to conform this because you're tired of all of this. Not saying I do, but some people try and they can't because it's in you. Okay? And it's um, one of those things where, you know, um, it's in you. And they, they can't control that. They have no control over that. It's all, you know, they can try to, to, try to um, lengthen the time or in, in, in create roadblocks and snares and so forth, prolong the time. But we know that everything's on a time. So it's, it's already noted that at uh, 1130, the Queen of Carver was going to make a video talking about that. He knew what I was going to do today on Saturday at 11.30. He knew that I was going to write this video. But he knows that another time, at this time, next month or the next week, the Queen of Carver at 11 such, such and such is going to have this happen. And he knows every single detail because he knew you before he formed you in the womb. He knew you. He already knew you. He ordained you sanctified you. He already knew that you was going to do this. He knew that you were going to do that. He knew this time. He knew that you were going to wake up and speak prophetically. He knew that you were going to move this mountain. He knew all of these things because like I said, when he spoke and built you, okay, when he spoke and built you up, he built you in your body. He built you. And he spoke all of these things over you. He built you. And he said, he said, The queen's gonna have these gifts. She's gonna have this. She's gonna have this. She's gonna have this. He said, I'm, "You're beautiful. I'm giving you all of this, all of this, all of this, all of this, all of this. You're beautiful." And then there's a copy that sees you and admires you. They admire you. They want your talent. They want you. They want your talent. They want your gifts. But guess they're gonna do everything they can to get it. But guess what? It won't operate the way that it operates with you because you are the gift. You are the vessel. You are the enforcer. You are the executor. You are the person to execute it. I don't care if they try to put it. I don't care what they do. It will not work. It's almost like when they stole the Ark of the Covenant in Dagoom, they put the Philistines put their Dagoom by, um, <laughs> they put their Dagoom by um, the, the Ark or whatever. And um, it kept falling over. It kept falling down. <laughs> and it's just like, it's not going to work. I don't care what you do. You're not going to be able to break forth like God, that's what makes it, that's what makes it different. See, there's a there's a difference. There's the one, meaning God who is holy and awesome and power, the one who where nothing is impossible. There's the one, and then there's the image. The image cannot be the one because the one is the one that made the image, and that's what you have to understand. That's what you have to understand. You will never, you will never be like the one. You will never be like the one. And that's where you have to come to yourself and say, look, I have a, you know, I, and, and some of us don't understand, you know, we don't understand what we really are, but you have to, even the gods, the children of God, you, you are not God, okay? And you have to realize your position and your authority. That's why we're not seeing, that's why we're not seeing power. That's why we're not, because we don't understand who we are. We don't understand who we are. We don't recognize that in some of us, uh, we are, but we don't speak. We don't speak, okay? We don't speak. We don't allow things to to move. We we you know we just accept for things the way they are, and we accept it and say you know, well, when God comes and when He does it, when when you know, and that's not that's not how it goes. You have to start opening your mouth and reaching out to the true and living God, and it, it's a difference between that because Simon Peter asked um, Yeshua, um, and I don't have the scripture right in front of me, but he asked Yeshua. Well, Yeshua asked Simon Peter. Simon Peter, son of Barjona, who do they say that I am? Because Jesus wanted to know if Peter knew who he was. But Peter knew exactly who he was because Peter said it. Peter said, you are the son of the living God. The son of the living God. There's a difference. Okay, so this is where you have to um, understand that. Okay, this is where you have to understand 
who you are, what you're following, um, whoever you're following, are they able to give you the things that you're looking for? Now, if you're looking for wealth, then you're poor, you know, you're looking for certain things, then of course you will have a different God. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what it is, what's your priority, um, what your priority is. But we have to get back to understanding that um, things are very different now. They're, they seem like they're scrambled. we got to talk about the state of America. The state of America has pushed God out of this nation. Um, they have pushed and tortured and killed the 144,000 over and over and over and over and over again through electronic harassment and all these different forms of technology. They have beaten up the anointing of God's people. They have destroyed and tried to destroy and kill and kill and kill these people. And I just want to tell you something. I don't know how much exposure we have had to all of these toxicities, all of these um, hazardous things and so forth, but some of us should have died a long time ago. Uh, let's just be honest here. We should be dead. We should be dis disabled. We should be um, uh, mentally challenged. Something should have happened that didn't happen. And, and just the fact that we know our torture. We know our torture that we're getting. We know the torture that is coming against us. We know the tortures that have constantly bombarded us and has taken to a place of like, what the heck is going on? I know I have. It has taken us to a state of like, what are they doing? What, what, when is this going to stop? And this has continued to go on and on and on and on. But the thing is, you're still here. You're still standing neurologically intact. It hasn't harmed you. What it's, what it's doing when they said in Daniel chapter 8, the truth was cast out to the ground, it's letting you see the wickedness for what it is. Right now you're observing. Right now you're observing. You're seeing how wicked America is. America is an evil and wicked nation that is going to fall. It's just imminent. This nation is going to bow. This nation is going to um, be utterly broken um, because they're just so evil. They're, they're, just, they're, they're, they're evil. And I mean, um, a lot of us are seeing it with our own eyes. We can't begin, we can't even understand. A lot of us are under this torture day by day, and they have yet to do anything about it. They haven't, they're not addressing our issues. They don't care to address our issues. Um, this government has been taken over by dark forces, and um, they're not concerned with our issues because they want to they wanna worship the God that is um, whatever they, they're benefiting from. You know, they enjoy... Um, living in this way but and, and that's fine and that's fine but it just allows you to know something it just allows you to know that you don't belong here and this makes you aware that you don't belong here it makes you aware that that you won't um, stand out and sometimes you have to die so if that was is if that's what it take if you're able if that's what it has to be it's like lauren hill said you know if everything must go then go if everything gotta go then go because I, I, I'm not going to live like this. I'm expected to have a certain quality of life, and I expect that quality of life. I haven't done anything to this nation. In fact, I've basically prayed and fasted for this nation. I've prayed. It's evidence on, on my channel. I've prayed and fasted for this nation and asked you all to fast for this nation. And we prayed and, and asked God to have mercy on this nation, and it is evidence. And so for, for this nation to attack the saints of God, for this nation to attack us on this level is basically saying, I don't give a damn. It's basically, I don't, I don't care what you did. We don't need your prayer. We don't need anything from God. We don't need your God. And that's basically what the nation is saying. We don't need, we don't want your God. We don't need you. And um, we want you out. That's what the nation said. You know, we did this. We, we held raw, live broadcasts praying for America. Praying for what? Praying for America. You know? I'm not, I don't have to pray for me. I don't have to be here. America has jacked me up from the, from day one. But guess what? I'm, I lived here amongst these people. I look at these people as my brother and sister. I went to these schools. I went to these schools. You know, my family is here. My family is here. You know, I pledge allegiance to the flag. You know, all of these things that I just can't, you know, I'm, I'm just perplexed as to how um, they can... Basically, I can't get a job in this nation. I pay taxes in this nation. I can't even get a job in this nation in my profession as a registered nurse without being harassed and tormented. So it just lets me know that I don't belong here. This is not my nation. 
it just lets me know that something is wrong. Um, these people see me as a, I don't know what these people see me as or what they see us as because it's, a, it's a, an attack against us. And America has to repent for this. They're attacking the church. They're attacking where the power is coming from. They're attacking these, these the, the Christians. They're attacking this group of people that what? They're attacking their God. So in essence, they're attacking God. They're attacking God. And they don't care. They don't care. Now, um, perhaps I got it wrong. I don't know. You tell me. Perhaps maybe I'm the one with the problem. Perhaps, you know, I don't, um, maybe I'm lacking understanding. And I would be uh, more than interested to hear, to hear um, any comments. I'm not looking to hear any ignorant, any ignorant comments or lack of intelligence. Um, but anyone that has any sort of common sense and understanding in terms of scripture, um, in terms of that, then I would love to hear it. But um, it's funny that this nation has shown no love whatsoever, no love whatsoever towards me. All, I, all I've received is hate, and I try to love past this hate, and um, I really have tried my best to love past this hate, but it's just hate fed day by day by day by day. And I'm hating the system. I'm hating this. The system exists. I hate that people are in positions of power and are not addressing the needs of the church or the targeted individuals. And they can't see the injustices that we face. They don't see that it's something's wrong. They don't see that something's wrong with people, children are getting shot dead in the streets. They don't see nothing wrong with po police brutality amongst uh, African Americans. They don't see, they, you know, they don't see uh, anything wrong. We, we're watching on America uh, a relationship or an affair between a, a world news between Stormy Daniels and, and, and President Trump. And that's not a priority. I'm sorry, it's not a priority. It's not a priority for the nation. That is not our priority. Our priority is addressing the needs of the civilians, addressing the issues that we deal with day to day, the issues of this torment and these, these isolated these isolated states that we're left in and our uh, mental institutions that they have placed um, that it seems to be escalating and somebody really getting down to the problem as to what's happening and all of these deaths and these suicides that continues to skyrocket they're not addressing the issues you know of, of poverty and of people that are um, trying to um, uh, trying to get ahead in life versus an affair with the press. I mean, I, I mean, I, I can't. I couldn't believe that we were watching on world news an affair between the president. Like, like we cared. Like, I mean, whatever they're doing, you, you know, that has not. We're not interested in that in the private life of what, whatever they're doing. Let them that work it out with whatever God that they're serving. We don't. We're not into. We're interested in the issues, the real issues that we're facing right now. You know, peep their justice system is what we need to be addressing right now. The justice system. That is unfair and corrupt in this nation is what we need to be addressing right now and then you have all of these these uh, rape cases that are coming against you know I don't really understand the details of Morgan Freeman but um, R. Kelly and and uh, um, Bill Cosby Bill Cosby this was like 30 years ago and I'm not saying that none of this happened I'm not saying that it didn't happen what I'm saying is the time frame in which has happened to me, me as a woman. I know if I got raped, I want you to, I, I'm going to have so much, I, it's going to be so much animosity and so much bitterness in me at that time where I was raped that I'm going to want you to go to jail right now, right then and now. So I'm not going to come back 30 years. I, I, don't, I don't understand the logic in that. I, I don't understand the priority in that. And, you know, where there's floods of women coming out now at the 30 years. And I'm not discounting that they were raped because if they were, you know, I, you know, my heart goes out to them, but I'm just talking about the time frame in which all of this has happened. It's just, you know, I just find it very um, perplexing as to where, why are we discussing this 30 years out, 20 years out when this happened? You should have been outraged when it happened, outraged when it happened. So why is there such a push right now where all of these cases are coming out? What is what's really happening here? I don't understand it. I don't get it. So it's just like. America is going in a state of reverse. They're reversing. They're going backwards. And I, know, I just think that they're just under a, um, 
they're living under a dark cloud right now. They're living in utter darkness where they can't see the truth. And, um, and they're living in a world that is giving them false, false light. They're, they're living in under false light. People think they know something and they don't know it. They don't know it. Or they're accusing and they're judging their brothers. And they're looking down on people, but they want to be forgiven. They want to be forgiven, you know. They want to be forgiven, but they don't want to forgive anybody else. So they want to make mockery out of people who are targeted and, and make references or whatever. They make little references calling us the sinners or whatever. And it's just like, you know, you want to be forgiven, but you don't want to forgive your brother. You don't want to forgive your brother. So, I mean, so how are you going to be forgiven? So, it, you know, it's just, just things that you need to look at. Things you and how you treat people and how you talk to people. And, um... You get understanding. If you don't get understanding, you got to look at your book, too, when you get an understanding. Because, again, we're hearing from people. We don't know who they are. Well, you need to start opening up your Bible. Opening up your Bible and the God that lives in you. Um, when you open up the Bible, it will reveal to you the things that you need to know. Okay? Um, also... Um, you know, it's funny because in retrospect, I can look at the time where I always, I can realize I never fit it in here. Um, but you can look, you know, I had my kids, I had my kids, um, my twins. You know, I was always under some psychological torture. Some of it was inflicted. Some of it came externally. Um, some of it was um, things that I did. I had to go through, you know, I went through IVF. I talked about before the psychological um, effects of that, the, the, the medications and the injections that you had to give yourself. But I'm pretty sound in my mind. Okay, so I've been through a lot of things and you can't, you know, try to discredit me, you know, with with these things because I'm pretty sound. I've been through some pretty traumatic um, circumstances and I'm still able to articulate what it is that I need to get my, when I need to get my point across. And you will understand my point. However, there are, um, you know, things that I try to put in place, like, you know, I try to put in my place, put in place life insurance, for example, for my children when they were born. And I was denied life insurance. I was, uh, I was uh, denied life insurance for my children. I took out a, a policy for them when I had children. I said, you know, let me take out a policy for life insurance for my children. Let me do something be for, for someone besides myself, because now I got two little ones that I got to take care of that didn't actually be here. Okay, they didn't ask to be here. So I said, let me put something, um, let me get a life insurance policy so that they'll have something, you know, in case I go. And not that I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't realize I was targeting at the time. I wasn't expecting to be denied because I'm healthy. For God's sake, I'm an angel. We're all angels. They denied an angel life insurance. They denied an angel life insurance. We're all angels. They're not all of us, but we are angelic. We are angelic beings. And they denied me life insurance. So this just goes to show the state. And, you know, when I looked at that, it was just, it, it was just, it's crazy. And I just realized, you know, when you look at all of these little incidences, you realize, um, you realize where you're from. And you, this is, not, you know, America, um, this, and I love this nation. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I was dead, you know, I, I just can't, I and mean, I'm just perplexed, to be honest with you, I'm perplexed. I can't believe, it's like waking up in a nightmare. I'm like, whoa, I'm like waking up in a nightmare, and I'm just like, how, how did I get here? How, what happened? It's like it happened overnight or something, and it's just like, you know, you don't understand it. So, you know, I leave you with that, because, um, and with America, the, um, you know, you need to get this, uh, your priority set. This nation needs to come under, um, this nation needs to uh, return, and this nation needs to um, seek healing because it's broken. This nation is broken and has broken the people. They continue to break the people. Uh, we have leaders in place that don't need to be in leadership. We have um, uh, organ. We have uh, uh, governments that are in place that are not enforcing uh, the laws and, and, and uh, you know things, all sorts of things um, that are happening. And um, we need to take better care of the citizens here. You need to do a better job. 
with governing. We need to do a better job with the justice system, and it's just not happening. And um, you know, at this point, you know, on the outside looking in, I can understand that America doesn't want me here. America doesn't want me here. They don't want a lot of us here. Okay, why? Because we're telling the we're telling the truth. But the truth is, you know, I'm at the point where you took my quality of life. You you're trying to take my quality of life. You're trying to take my identity. You're trying to take my identity. And I am not gonna allow somebody to take my identity because my identity is what makes me me. Um, you're not gonna try to make me desolate and invisible. You're not gonna try to shut me up because you've taken everything from when I came out the womb in retrospect now that I can see. You've taken everything and you're not taking it anymore. There's gonna be there's a group of people that are saying you're not taking anymore. You're not taking anything else. And the image is not gonna corrupt what is holy and what is set apart. The image cannot do anything. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you try to do. You'll never win. You'll never be the same. It's just like one of those bags that they have to throw out because the stitch is wrong. The stitch is wrong. The fabric is wrong. You'll never have the walk. You'll never have the confidence. You'll never have the strength as the one because there is the one. And that's just always what it is. There is the one. You know, they can walk like it and try to walk like it, but the true knows the one. The true knows who the one is because it's something, it's a communication that they each share. It's a communi we're all connected and it's a communication that they share and they're going to stick together. They're going to stick together spiritually. So it's nothing that you can do to break these people. And it's just one of those things where you have to, the, the false has to realize that you're not going to break these people. You're not going to shake them. They're unshakable. They're uncorrupt. They're incorruptible and they're unshakable. And you're not gonna, you're not going to um, be able to penetrate because they have been strengthened. It was already predestined. They already, you know, um, their God already saw this um, forecoming. They already saw that they were going to be tortured and traumatized. He already saw all this, but He already prepared them for the fight. They've been prepared since they came out of birth. A lot of us have already gone through our our struggles and some of us have more struggles and traumas than others have and um, we have always overcame we have always overcome we are the strength we are the strength and we are the foundation. like God said upon this rock I have built my church and not even the gates of hell will be able to prevail they will not be able to prevail God said they will fight against you but they will not prevail God said God said they will do all of this because why because he he already knew what it was going to look like. He knew what it was going to look like. He's the writer of the book. He's the story writer. He's the author of the book. So he already knew what this was going to look like. He already knew attack was coming on you. But he knew that he had built you and designed you to be able to um, to come against these attacks. The only thing right now is the church is frustrated. The church is frustrated because, um, you know, it goes back to what I said. You have to start talking too. Not just one person can speak. Okay. You have the same authority I have. You have the same authority I have. You are um, committed to the same, the same cause that I have. You are to go out there and you can do the same thing I can. You can open your Bible the same way I can because the gift is in you. The gift is in you. You have to activate it. It's something that requires activation, uh, consistency, and um, practice. It's just like when I you know, was consistently doing my videos. And people know when the Holy Spirit is with you. Why? Because they know the Holy Spirit. They know the real Holy Spirit. They know the real Holy Spirit. And they, they relate to that hope. They relate to that. And they're able to, um, they're able to um, uh, be led by you because they know, they know what it um, is. So this is what it is. This is, um, this is uh, I hope this teaching was very informative. Um, I hope it allowed you to um, get better understanding if some of you didn't understand um, and I hope this um, brings uh, understanding to the targeted individuals or, or persecuted into individuals I like to refer to them as as well but we have we have been through a lot you can look at my testimonies we have been through so much so much attacks on the head so many attacks and guess what we still we're still speaking. We're still able to talk. We can still walk. We can still love. The hate is for the sister. The hate is for the oppression. The hate is for the oppression.
but we're compassionate about our people. We're compassionate about people that are suffering. We are compassionate about this because guess what? Nothing is better than being amongst a team of people who have suffered like you, like you. When they have suffered like you, those are the people you want to be around because those people are not going to hate you. They're not going to stab you in the back. When you depend, when you um, you can depend on them, if they don't uh, want, they're not going to do something. They don't tell you they're not going to do it. They're reliable, and they will keep your secret. They will keep your secret. These people are very dependable. Anybody that's suffering with you that knows all of this thing, and they're not going to sell you out. They're not going to sell you out. They're not. They're not going to sell you out. So it's just one of those things where we have to. Um, you know, just wait for the time to come when we are with our people um, and continue to try to do our best. That's all we can do right now is to try to do our best. And, um, you know, when you get to that point where you're not afraid to die or whatever, whatever has to happen to you, just let it, it, it has to happen because you, you're going to die any, you know, you eventually have to, you know, go at some point. It's just where you're going to go is a question that, that becomes the question where you're going it becomes the question. But you know you're going to have to go some, at some point, and you have to realize that. So don't try to prolong it by trying to fit in and adapt when you know you can't, um, you know you can't do it. Some things you just got to say no. You know, I'm not going to be able to do that. You know, I can't. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm sorry. And, um, you know, and, and that's just the way it is. So I'm going to leave you with that. And, um, you know, I hope this blessed you. And um, take care, everyone. Shalom.